Hi, today we are going to talk about all things suet and tallow and make some surprising things. Say surprising. surprising. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you check out some of my other videos and my website. These things have helped me to lose over 130 pounds. For those of you returning, welcome back. I hope you like today's video. Hi, so we are going to cover some things, all things to me, uh, suet and tallow. So what am I gonna show you today? It all starts with this big hunk of suet. So I buy this suet, it's uh, quite readily from a local grocery store. It's about 500 grams, which is just over a pound. And it is in the their frozen meat section. Uh, if you live in my area, uh, that grocer is Save On Foods. So go check that out. I'm sure that you can also get this from a butcher. I have seen uh, frozen suet chunks at a couple of different butchers, and most butchers are willing to save you some if you ask. Everything we do today is going to start with this hunk of suet. So the four things I'm going to show you are crispy suet bites, and I used those uh, recently to make some something called beef crunchies. It, uh, it also will make usable tallow for cooking. I have a cup of tallow in here. Uh, notice how clean and white it, it is. Like, I love that, that comes from this. I am going to also show you how to make the whipped tallow, but I'm gonna show you how to do it light and fluffy uh, because that wasn't my experience the first time I had it. Uh, I've been using it to make these little tallow bites. Uh, this is whipped tallow that I made in a little mold like this. But you don't have to do that. I have seen people make their whipped tallow and just keep it in a bowl in the fridge. And if you do it the way that I'm going to show you later, you don't have to keep it in the freezer for it to be like this. This has been sitting in my fridge for two days. I took it out of the freezer. It is light and fluffy to eat. Um, and I'm also going to show you, and this is going to be surprising, a recipe uh, that uses some of the whipped tallow to make cloud bread. So you can have a protein bun using tallow, uh, no dairy. Okay, so uh, let's, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is cut this up, put it in my air fryer. Okay, so let's start up the air fryer and it's actually a Ninja Grill, but it has an air fryer option. So I'm going to turn it on, put it on air crisp. 390 is fine, and I will go about 15 minutes. Let's get this ready. I've had this sitting on the counter for about an hour, so it makes it just a little easier to cut up if you take it out ahead of time but you don't want to cut it up if it's completely thawed because it will fall apart. It's like frozen bits that have all been, you know, formed here. So the first thing that I'm going to make to get to all these other things is I'm going to make my suet, my crispy suet bites. And while the crispy suet bites are being made, the tallow is going to drip into the bottom pan. Uh, and then we pour it off to get this and that will form the basis of other things we're going to do today. So you get quite a bit out of this. Also, I would recommend not uh, seasoning the suet bites or the suet pieces before you put them in there because we want the tallow that drips down into the pan to be free and clear of, any, of anything. Uh, they, if you salt them right after they come out, that will be the best thing. Actually, all these little bits that got left behind, I'm just gonna toss them in here and let them melt down. 
to the bottom because it's all going to get used. Okay, yes, look at those. Okay, so this was 15 minutes at 390 and I flipped them at the halfway mark. I just want to say uh, also that for those of you who don't have a situation like this, because I, I used the air fryer basket, which allows the tallow to go into the bottom of the pan. If you don't have a setup like this, you can make these in a pot of tallow. You can deep fry them and then scoop them out with a slotted spoon. They will work pretty much the same. So I'm gonna take these out to allow them to cool down. They will, uh, as they cool down, like they'll feel a little bit soft when you take them out of here, but as they cool down, they're going to harden up. Oops, almost lost that one. Okay, so there's my suet, crispy suet pieces. I am going to put some salt on them. I like using the big flaky salt on these. You can use Redmond salt. That is also quite good. Okay, so uh, while those are cooling off, I don't wanna bite into that yet because that's going to burn my tongue. Uh, you can see here that there is a lot of tallow down here. There's a couple of little bits, but I will, I will scoop those out. Oop, got them. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, we're gonna let that cool because this is really hot. I don't wanna pour this yet. Um, so we'll let that cool for a few minutes and then I'll be pouring this off to use it um, in our other things that we're making, our whipped tallow and our cloud bread. So um, I always also save some like this uh, in a jar for cooking. So it makes a great, like it's so awesome for uh, cooking burgers, for example, or frying a steak, anything that you fry, eggs, whatever. Uh, you've got this pure white fat. So anyways, we'll leave that alone for a moment. Uh, let me see how these feel, if I can, no, they're still quite hot. Okay, so we're gonna come back just in a couple minutes and uh, try that and pour that off. Okay, we are ready to try our suet, crispy suet bites. I'm going to pick one up and take a bite. Now, I love using these as little sandwiches, like in the uh, beef crunchies, but I also like them just like this as well. And I enjoy them cold too, so leftovers are okay. Mm, really good, mm, yummy. Perfect for if you are doing some high fat carnivore days. Um, like if you do, say if you know you want to really get a lot of fat in in a day, these are uh, something like 96% fat. So perfect just like that. Um, so let's uh, get the tallow in here because we are going to make some whipped tallow. I'm using this because I need a, some flexible fingers and the uh, these pans are still gonna be quite hot, so I'm going to drain this off into there as much as possible. Just gonna take this over here to the sink. I'm gonna pour the rest of this into this uh, mixing bowl. Be very careful, because this is, you know, hot fat. So we have, I'm gonna say about 450 mils of tallow, which is almost two cups, just under two cups, maybe one and three quarter cups. So uh, what I need to do now is get my mixer, put this uh, back in its corner, make myself a little bit of room, and we are going to I'm gonna show you what I learned about whipping tallow. Um, there's kind of a, you can whip it or you can do it properly. And I'm, you know, I think I've learned how to do it properly now because the difference was night and day. So uh, come back for that. Okay, I'm ready to get going on the whipped tallow, but first I want to talk to you about how I made it before. 
and um, you know what my experience was. So a few weeks ago, when I started to do high fat carnivore, I uh, had seen some people having whipped tallow, and uh, I thought, okay, it's just tallow, you whip it. <laughs> and yeah, you can have it that way. But when I tasted it, you know, I made myself some very attractive little bites. Uh, when I tasted it, I felt like I was eating candle wax. And what I had done was uh, I had just poured it in and whipped it and that was it. And, and, and that will work, but um, I decided I didn't like it. And then I heard people talking about it being the consistency of whipped cream. And I was thinking, mine was not the consistency of whipped cream. I love whipped cream. I would have liked it if it was the consistency of whipped cream. So I found on YouTube, there's all these ladies. There's probably some men too, but there's all these people who make whipped, uh, whipped body butter out of tallow. So I watched a couple of those and that's when I found out there's actually some stages to this. So I'm gonna, so I did that a few days ago and made the most delicious whipped tallow and now I like it. And so I, I'm gonna hopefully pass on that method to you um, so that you can see, you know, what, what the, like it's a little bit, takes a little bit longer, but it's so well worth it. Um, okay, so let's get started. We have our melted tallow. So it all starts with melted tallow. I have big red, ready to go here. You can do this also with a hand mixer. There's no problem with that. Okay, so I'm, I'm, right now there's nothing in there but whipped tallow. Later I'll be adding some vanilla, um, but let's just, let's just go. I'm gonna let this go for about a minute. I should have put my splatter screen on. Okay, so, um, Absolutely, if you have a splatter screen, please put it on. Uh, mine is in the garage somewhere, I don't know where it is. So I'm going to just smooth down all the tallow that went up to the sides here. I don't know what to do about this, what I got all over me, but we're just gonna do that. It's only the first part where you're gonna get some splatter. And also when I made it last time, I only had one cup in here and now I've got almost two cups in here. So there's a lot more volume to worry about. Um, so I'm going to turn this on for just another minute and, uh, and then I'll explain how this is going to go. Okay, so um, We've whipped that up. We've whipped a little bit of air into it. Now we're going to let it congeal. And that takes uh, five to 10 minutes. So uh, we will be back in a few minutes. Uh, I'll show you the next step and what happens after that. Okay, so we are at the next phase of the whipped tallow. The tallow is starting to congeal and what you're looking for is for the tallow to get cloudy. It's not 100% clear anymore. So uh, we're going to whip it again uh, to get to the next phase. I'm just first going to move, push down the hardened bits that were around the edge. I should have done that. This is only my second time doing it this way, but the, it, you know, it was such a success, even with all these little bits of stops and starts, that it's definitely worth doing. Okay, so what, we have something that just looks like maybe creamy liquid honey, and we're gonna leave that for a few minutes and then come back and do this again. 
Okay, so this has been about three-ish minutes, uh, whereas the first time I let it sit was 10 minutes. So this is between three and four, and it's kind of congealed like a lot. It's almost like, it, you know, it's getting to that white solid. So we're gonna get it going again. And at this point, I'm going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla. You don't have to. I'm just doing it for a little more flavor for myself, my preference. You absolutely can just leave it as is. Or you can add different flavors like those sugar-free oils. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it up. Now we're gonna let it sit for another possibly two, three, four minutes. So we're, get, we're getting there. Okay, so now we're gonna do it again. So now it's uh, about the, it looks like pudding, I guess is a good way to describe it. We're going, to, oh, and I did taste it. I want just a little more vanilla flavor in there. Another teaspoon is going in. Okay, so this will be the final. We're gonna let it sit for another couple of minutes. I'm gonna try to scrape down as much as I can. And then the next whipping should be what makes it nice and fluffy. We'll see. So let's uh, wait that two or three more minutes. Okay, so this has been sitting about three minutes. Let's try another whip, and hopefully it's gonna be where we want, where you might have to do it one more time. I think we're almost there, but I don't know if we're, we're there yet. I'm gonna let it go one more time. Okay, we're gonna turn it on one last time. Okay, I'm much happier with this now. Okay. So now this can be, um, you can put it in a pastry bag and make little rosettes or you can put it, use one of those molds like I showed you before, uh, put in the freezer and uh, make some molds for this, for, for eating. Um, so the body butter people, they take this and they put it into little jars and they sell it um, or they keep it for themselves and they use it as a body lotion, softener. I, I don't know if they know that you can just eat it. <laughs> Um, so that's my plan. My plan is to eat it, but first I'm going to measure out some of it to be used in our next recipe, which is a, a high fat um, cloud bread of sorts. Uh, and I got that recipe from Becky Niles. I will link her channel below and this will be my first time trying it. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about it. So I'm, I'm going to measure that out right now and then I'm gonna put the rest of this in a jar just to eat out of the fridge. So what I need for this next recipe is a, um, a three quarters of a cup. I see I have a little bit in there that didn't quite whip up. So I'm gonna try not to get too much of that. This might, you know, take a few tries uh, to get the right consistency and the right technique here. But I think that's about, that's about three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to clean up, make room for our um, whipped tallow cloud bread and we'll be back in the next segment here. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna make the final recipe in this video. We are going to make uh, protein buns out of uh, tallow, whipped tallow, 
and egg white. So this came about because I have lately been making, um, I've been making 12 egg yolks only in a pan like this. Uh, you'll see a little bit of footage up at the top here. Two yolks per thing, whatever it's called, per well. I bake those and people have been asking me, um, what do you do with all the egg whites you have left? And you know, I sort of like, no, I, mean, I throw them away. I throw them away. <laughs> because I, hadn't, I didn't know what to do with them. I, you know, it's like, I just didn't know. And then I saw Becky Niles making buns with her leftover egg whites and whipped tallow. And normally buns like that, they've got egg white powder in them. They, you know, my like cloud buns usually have cream cheese, some kind of cheese, dairy, dairy sub, you know, they like there's all these other things. And hers only had the egg whites, the tallow, a little bit of seasoning. So I'm gonna give that a try because I would rather not waste the egg whites. So I saved my 12 egg whites from my making my yolks and I'm gonna whip them up right now and get started on here. So I've switched bowls because the other one still is full of whipped tallow. <laughs> All right, I have the oven set to 350. To stop it and take a look. Yeah, that's, that's pretty stiff. Okay, I'm not sure exactly how long that was, but you definitely wanna whip until the egg whites are very stiff. That's what you're looking for. Should be able to do that and not have it fall out. So the next job is to incorporate this whipped tallow into the egg whites. Now the nice thing about the whipped tallow is that it is still kind of spreadable. Um, now I'm a little bit concerned because uh, I took this out and then kept whipping my other tallow and my other tallow in the fridge is way lighter than this. Okay, I just want to show you the difference between this. See, this has been in the fridge and I feel like it's definitely lighter than that one. Um, but live and learn, I am just gonna forge ahead so I'll start with a little bit at a time and see how we do here. This is always the trickiest part anyways. I'm getting somewhere, but I can definitely see there, you know, it's not that easy to incorporate the whip tallow into the egg whites. Um, and maybe if I had, done some of the tallow and some of the egg white in a smaller bowl and then work that in here. Um, but these are the things that, you know, I kind of learn as I do them. This is my first time making this particular recipe with tallow. Um, and then the other lesson I'm going to take from this is that you probably can't whip it too much. Uh, probably another you know, another few minutes of whipping may have made a difference as well. So the moral of the story is to whip it, whip it good. I think that might be as good as it's going to get without me flattening this, these egg whites out. So let's just go with it and see how it goes. It uh, won't be the first or the last time that I have failed on camera, but maybe not. You just never know. That's why I always like to see it through. If you don't have one of these muffin top pans, I just, I have two of them because I use them all the time. You can, you know, put this on parchment paper, just make six even piles or if you wanna, however many you want. I always like six as a nice number. They look fairly large, but as you know, with anything made with egg whites, everything shrinks down. <laughs> so for those of you who have made any of the egg white stuff, we get a lot of shrinkage. 
I will link Becky's video down below where I saw this. Hers looked pretty good. They came out nice. <laughs> Let's hope. Now I'm going to sprinkle this on. You can leave this out if you like. Okay, I'm gonna put them in the oven. Her instructions are 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, I'm gonna put them in and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, what have we got here? Um, this is 20 minutes. We have lots of melted tallow. So I think, uh, I think if, were I to do this again, I would probably make 12 <laughs> or, or eight or 10 or something. Cause I, you know, clearly have overfilled these. So, um, but that's fine. We're gonna take one out and we're gonna see what it is like inside. I don't know if you can hear that, but the gardeners always show up when I want to do some filming. So what can you do? Take this one out. I want to try a piece without any butter or other enhancements on it. So I'm gonna cut it in half. Let's see what we have inside. So it, uh, it, it looks okay. It's not as bread-like as the um, cloud buns, but those have dairy in them. So for people who can't do dairy. Okay, so I'm going to do a taste. Um, it looks quite egg whitey to me. Um, I think maybe next time, uh, well, let me taste it and then I'll say what I might do next time. Okay, tastes like egg whites to me. Um, the, the seasoning I put on helped. I think if I had been able to better incorporate the whipped tallow, that that would have helped. So I am gonna try that again, um, you know, just in the comfort of my home with no cameras on. Um, the other thing is I might, uh, I think maybe a teaspoon of baking powder might help things along here. Um, but as far as, you know, having a dairy-free bun, I think for a lot of people that would be valuable. So this could be worked on a little bit to, to make it um, a little more what I was hoping for. So, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna use them. I think with some fried eggs on them, you know, I, I would definitely use something like this to make a fried egg sandwich or maybe even a burger bun, you know, cause when you have, when you add all the other things, like for example, Butter makes everything better. Where's my butter? Or a bacon and egg sandwich. Let's see what a little bit of butter will do on this. Mm -hmm. Definitely up for putting butter on those. Um, okay, so what did we make here today? Let's just quickly summarize. Out of that one hunk of suet, we made suet bites, crunchy suet bites. Now I ate half of them. <laughs> because that was around my breakfast time that we did those. So some of those are gone. We made whipped tallow. And uh, some of the whipped tallow ended up in this jar. And as you, this has been in the fridge. As you can see, it is still light and fluffy. And so um, I love this as a snack as opposed to the candle wax whip tallow that I made the first time I tried this. The secret is in resting, whipping, resting, whipping. Do it as many times as you need to get that nice whipped texture. And then we used some of the whip tallow to make this. And this, I, I can see where I could make some improvements to this and try this again. So stay tuned for that. But we got an awful lot. I mean, yes, there's egg whites in there, but we got an awful lot of good stuff out of that hunk of suet, hunk of suet fat or whatever you call that. So I hope that uh, this video um, added some value to your high fat carnivore and the way you make things. Um, uh, and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.